Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. It's time to dive into the box again. Thank you, fan of the gourmet, for the white glove treatment. You probably thought we weren't ever going to use these, but uh, you gave them to us just after I had recorded a whole bunch of these videos and I wasn't really ready to re-record. So thanks to Fan of the Gourmet for the gloves and thanks to Sasami-chan for a book about the Waltons. Holy smokes! The Waltons? Well, Little Golden Books does do all sorts of um, franchises. Oh, all I have to say is good night, John boy. Good night, Mary Ellen. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. As you saw from the video, assuming I approved it, we have another little golden book. The Waltons and the Birthday Present. This is book number 134 in the Little Golden Book series. And back in the day, it was only 49 cents. Looks like it was another well-loved book because there's tape across the cover there. Yes, so this has been uh, rebound with tape. And you probably won't be able to tell most of that because Lux is really good at um, restoring and fudging the covers to make them look nice. Yeah, though I, with this one, I actually looked up um, scans of someone else's online. Mm. <laughs> Still takes fudging to make sure I have the text so I can move it around. Yep. I never watched the Waltons. Oh, I, I watched it. I don't know how much I really watched it. I was in the room while it was on. That was you with a lot of things. All right, by Jane Godfrey. Hmm. Oh, let's read her credit again. Yep. Well, there's 1975. I realize the Waltons was that old. One day, Elizabeth had exciting news, and she couldn't wait to tell the family about it. Her best friend, Patty, was having a birthday. Her party is on Saturday, and I'm invited finished Elizabeth, beaming with happiness. Okay, I recognize everyone but the girl. <laughs> that is so weird. I can't remember most of their names, but I recognize them. Mom, Dad, Grandma, Grandpa, John Boy. Ah. <laughs> but onto the actual art itself, it's very well done. I wonder if they actually took stills from this series and painted them based on that because they're very stylized but accurate. Can't quite make out the month on the calendar. <laughs> I'm just gonna try. Mama smiled. Well now, she said, a very special friend should have a very special birthday present. What will you give her? A new hair ribbon would be nice, said Grandma. Or maybe a fine hand-stitched handkerchief, suggested Grandpa, who had received one for Christmas. Then John Boy said, how about giving Patty the baby rabbit? Okay, that thinking face on the girl is, like, super cute. Very cute. And something about the way they did the hair on Grandma in this particular shot looks weird to me. It's like it's separated from the rest of her head. <laughs> kind of like, I would describe it as like they just took a sticker of hair on top of, like, one of those paper dolls. <laughs> yeah. And remember, kids, you should always be careful when giving a pet as a gift. If you are a child and your friend is a child, always ask the parents first. Yeah. I had baby rabbits. They were cute. Most baby animals are. Or they're so ugly they're cute. <laughs> I can think of several dogs. Well, breeds of dogs, actually. Elizabeth's eyes sparkled. That was a wonderful idea. The mother rabbit was Elizabeth's own beloved pet. Mrs. Fluffytail had had seven babies, and six of them had been given away. The last baby was the best rabbit of all. Except for his mama, of course. Hmm. It's interesting. The, um, it's, like, the art really isn't that consistent. The style's there, but the faces and, like, the way the hair and stuff is rendered is kind of different per page. Oh, thank you, John Boy, cried Elizabeth. Tomorrow I'll ask Patty's mama and daddy if it's all right. Oh, there we go. All right, they put it in the book. Yay. And that's just what she did. Patty's parents said yes. So from then on, Elizabeth brushed Little Whisker's coat every chance she got. Soon he was the handsomest rabbit on Walton's Mountain. 
Except for his mama, of course. Um, that's a little redundant or repetitive anyways. But the bunny's cute. It's really cute. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a bunny. Oh, God, that smirk. Patty was full of curiosity. All week long, Elizabeth was too busy to play with her. I have to get your birthday present ready, she said. Is it something to wear? asked Patty. Is it something to eat? Is it a box of crowns? Is it an all-day sucker? Is it a rubber ball? Nowhere near. That face... Something about the way they did the jaw kind of creeps me out. Well, also, it's just a face. There's no body. <laughs> Not even a neck. Well, that, that means just funny to me. I don't know why. But Elizabeth wouldn't tell. Wait and see, she teased. It's a very special present for a very special best friend. Both Patty and Elizabeth could hardly wait. It seemed that Saturday would never come, but at last it did. Wow, I I'm seeing a couple of outcomes in my head for this story. Mm-hmm. Overhype is one of them. Mm-hmm. The other is she can't give up the bunny. The other one is she loses the bunny in the box on the way. But the image I found kind of funny kind of makes sense. I think it's the whole teasing face there, as I would put it. Mm -hmm. Another way is tee -hee. And, and she just looks kind of like, oh, um. Yeah, because the waiting is the hardest part. That morning, Grandma gave Elizabeth a beautiful blue ribbon from her needlework box. Then Elizabeth made a pretty birthday card. John Boy helped her write on it. You have had all week, girl. Yeah. Ooh. With the blue ribbon, they tied the card around the baby bunny's little neck. Kids don't do that. Then they put him in a box with some air holes in the top, and Elizabeth set it gently on the front porch. How surprised Patty is going to be this afternoon. She laughed happily as she went into lunch. Shouldn't boxing the rabbit be like the last thing you do before you go? I, what's wrong with the hutch? You would package it up just before you leave so you can hold the box closed on the way there. But then we wouldn't get the next page. Yeah, which, congratulations, Ember. Once again, your skills of deduction. <laughs> but that afternoon, it was Elizabeth who was surprised. When she was ready to go to the party, she found the box empty. Little Whisker had got out. She couldn't find him anywhere. It's a cardboard box. Yeah, if you'd used the ribbon to tie the box closed instead of tying it around the rabbit's neck. Yeah, but even with that, that's kind of cruel. So once again, going back to the whole, do it just before you leave. Yeah, absolutely. Just before you leave. Also, a lot of the old stories use a cardboard box to put with holes in it to put the animal in. So, also take into account the timing. Well, it, yeah, the timing is the real thing. If they would have left it tied up in the box all day, that would have been bad. Also, meant the timing is in the era. Ah. Before the ASPCA and before PETA. Everyone joined in the search. Daddy and John Boy looked under the house. Grandpa, Jason, Mary Ellen, and Jim Bob looked in the yard, but it was no use. There was no sign of Whisker. He was gone. Don't cry, Elizabeth, said Mama. Patty will surely understand. A young girl on her birthday? Uh, nope. Unless she's written that way. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth didn't say anything. She knew, of course, that Patty would understand, but how disappointed she would be. All week long, she had looked forward to her very special gift, and now Elizabeth had nothing fitting to give her. Then, all at once, she thought of something. The mother. Of course. Gently, she took Mrs. Fluffytail from her hutch. She held her pet in her arms. May I, Mama? She asked, trying to swallow the lump in her throat. May I give my rabbit to Patty? It was Daddy who answered. He and Mama looked very proud. We think that's a fine idea, honey, he said quietly. The faces when they do close-ups like this are the best. I think maybe they had equal amount of time, and so when they had more people, they couldn't quite put as much detail. Okay, this looks interesting. Yeah, because this was the other part. The rabbit may has made its way mysteriously over to Patty's house. Yeah. Elizabeth held her chin high as she walked through Patty's front gate. Her friend came running to meet her. Oh, Elizabeth, she cried. I'm so glad you brought Mrs. Fluffytail to the party. 
Now we'll have two rabbits to have fun with. Two rabbits? Elizabeth gasped. Little Whisker is here, said Patty, laughing. My birthday present came hopping into the garden just after lunch. He's a wonderful present. I knew he was from you. Look. You almost said whiskers, didn't you? Yes. Because who has just one whisker? Elizabeth looked, and there, at the picnic table, was the baby rabbit. He still wore his blue ribbon. He still wore his birthday card. It said, To Patty, a very happy birthday. Love, Elizabeth. What about the buns? Yes, pausing for the groan. What fun they all had that afternoon. The rabbits seemed to enjoy it, too. Yeah, of course, it's the Waltons. Happy ending. Mm-hmm. And she didn't have to give up her rabbit. The whole point was that she was willing to make the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. My birthday bunny is the best bunny in the world, said Patty proudly. Except for his mama, of course, Elizabeth said with a chuckle as she took Mrs. Fluffy Tail home. They really do a nice job on the faces like this, like I said before, and the bunnies are cute. Mm -hmm. That night, when everyone was in bed, Mary Ellen said, Elizabeth, may I have a baby bunny when my birthday comes? Me too, asked Aaron. Me three, called John Boy. Me four, added Ben. Oh God, that's me. <laughs> if you wanted one that badly, why didn't you have one of the other six? But Elizabeth didn't answer. She was very, very happy. She was also very fast asleep. Ah, this explains a lot of the um, condition of this book. Former library book. Hope it's not overdue. Whoa. <laughs> this is one of those times where you get to buy it. Yes, because libraries do decommission books and sell them. They, yeah, there's a full old-fashioned library With punch card in here. Dates. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I'm just saying, like, we could actually see when this thing was checked out. Yeah, so the earliest one on this card was... May 9th, 1985. But I wonder if the card was also used for selling it because there's the original price of the book in the corner and then there's a smaller price underneath it. Hmm. Very neat. Mm -hmm. It's funny. All the front ones have the usual stamp and signature. Then the back one, the date's handwritten and says the signature. Hmm. And those ones don't have years. They just have month day. And I'm surprised it didn't end it with the classic, Good night, John boy. Good night. So on and so forth. Well, I think that's what they were doing with the baby bunnies. Uh, ah, here's a second card. So, yeah, it was checked out a lot. Hmm. I don't know if it's a school library book. Yep. That reminds me, weren't you, like, scared and taking care of your books by a little librarian? Yes, yes. Our, our elementary school librarian would show us what happens when people don't take care of books covered in jam and torn pages and water splashes and coffee stains oh my yes oh this has been a little golden book the waltons and the birthday present by jane godfrey thanks again for listening well, let's see the Waltons. That's still relatively popular, right? We'll we'll see about getting you a link uh, for a book, or maybe for some episodes of the Waltons. I don't know. We'll see what we can find. If it's on Amazon. Yep, because you know affiliate links. You guys like Ebates, right? You know cashback on stuff for making purchases. As long as you don't use it to make extra purchases you know you save money if you use it to buy something you were going to buy anyways amazon and ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with ember's reading room or any content of the lux analysis channel thanks again for listening <laughs>